Okay. So it was even very hard for me to find this flow chart. I wasn't able actually to find it until after second period. So let's go through this flow chart because it is how to keep all of that stuff organized. Now, first of all, you have your question, whatever it may be. And then this is the easiest, most overlooked step. Even after I said that to the other class, every student that came up to me, that they're like, I don't know what to do next. I said, take out a GCF. And they went, oh, and then they sat down. Okay? Now, that's normal. The first thing you should always do is try to take out a GCF, but it's the first thing people forget. And they are hard questions to do. And time consuming. Okay? So, everyone's got this chart out so we can make notes on it. Now, here's a very good, you could start separating how many terms. If it's got two terms, either it's not going to get factored. Well, see, there's some two termers that you just take out a GCF and you're done. The students are like, am I done? I'm like, can you factor anymore? No. Okay, you're done. Like, if you had, you know, 4B plus 2, all right, you just take out a 2. You got, like, B, 2B plus 1. So it's like, like, what do we do now? I'm like, it's good. It's done. Oh, okay, cool. You know, they sit down, right? Now that I have the answer key for you, uh, you'll probably go, hey, that's what I got. Awesome. But what if it has two terms and you've taken a GCF? If it is in this form, perfect square minus the perfect square, that's difference of squares. You know how to do that. If it has three terms, well, let's we'll talk about that in a second. Four terms, I can tell you right away, they're looking for grouping. Remember, we would put our brackets around, right? Then we would take out a 2x. Then we would take out a 3y, right? And then you take out your x plus 2, leaving you with 2x plus 3y. That's like the end of all of our type 2s. Well, maybe they'll just give it to you in that form. Now, if it has three terms, it can either be a simple trinomial, which we called type 1, or it could be the kind with an A value, and that's type 2. Now remember, if it's a type 1, those are the nice ones, right? And, and I, I don't like that. What two things add to give me positive 2, multiply to give me negative 48. Make sure you establish the signs first. The signs would be positive and negative. Okay, and then it would be positive 8 and negative 6. Positive 8, negative 6. And then it is just goes into this form right here. We'd probably write x plus 8, x minus 6, but it's the same thing, right? 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. Now, take 2 has a number in front of the x squared. That's called decomposition. Because we don't get to go right to this step. Okay? Once we f now, first of all, finding this number is different, and we don't get to go here. So, similar, the first step, except, again, I don't like this. So, it's like, you know, what two things add to give me 4, positive 4, and multiply to give me negative 12. And it would be a what would be my signs? Positive and negative. 6 and negative 2. Good. 6 and negative 2. And then this is where you go next. Okay? Big difference. Um, type 1. Type 1, if you figured out... Now, first of all, remember, I guess we should really put an asterisk around this because this is A times C. This being A and this being C. Okay? 
Okay, and once you have that, then you're going to do grouping just like you did when you have these four terms. So you're going to do your grouping. You take out your 2x here, your negative 1 here. Oh, awesome. They look the same. Factor it out, and then you're done. And remember, you always have the convenience of putting this into y1, this into y2, and seeing if the graphs are the same. So this has been our entire journey. We started off with GCFs. Okay? We learned GCFs. You guys are doing good at GCFs, right? You understood GCFs. Then we went on to the next. We got harder and harder and harder. Then you forgot GCFs, right? So it's like, remember what got you there? It was GCFs. And they will get you out of more problems than you'll imagine. Yes? The perfect square is if you take the square root of the first, the square root of the second, multiplied by 2, it equals the middle term. Yes, you could solve it. Yeah. yeah, the question I would ask is like the one I did, is this, if I had 4x squared, you know, minus like 9, what term could that be to be a perfect square? So that's where you kind of have to have that knowledge, right? Okay. So how does this look? It's a lot of stuff, I know. But practice is like by, by grade 11, you are going to be very, very happy that you know this stuff because you will be maybe... Maybe you don't go into AP next year, as horrible as that would be, but you will maybe be with people that are not good at these, and then you'll see what kind of advantage you have. Because if you know how to do these, it makes grade 11 and grade 12 so much easier. Okay? So you kind of have to suck it up this year. We've got lots of practice for you. Lots of time to practice, though. I'm here to answer any questions. We're going to be nice and quiet today. And... So, you have day nine, homework, is due tomorrow. Day 10, homework, is due on Monday. On Monday, you will get a practice test. Well, no, I'm going to give you a practice test tomorrow. So, you could finish everything totally before the weekend. Okay? And then you would get sixes on those. And then, you know what? I think that uh, you should learn.